Well, welcome back. Well, as we've been reporting, a federal judge granting former President Trump's request for a special master to review the items seized during that last month's Mar-a-Lago raid, Judge Eileen Cannon putting a pause on the Justice Department's access to the documents, writing, quote, the court also temporarily enjoins the government from reviewing and using the seized materials for investigative purposes, pending completion of the special master's review or further court order. Cannon revealed some materials seized by the FBI include Trump's medical records and tax documents. Trump's team is now tasked with working with the government on compiling a list of potential candidates for the special master role. Joining me right now is Tennessee Congressman David Kustoff. He's a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Your reaction to uh, this uh, development, uh, this win for President Trump? Yeah, I think, uh, good morning, Maria. I think Judge Cannon had ex exactly right. The fact of the matter is, uh, with these materials that were seized, the president is afforded the right, uh, first of all, of attorney-client privilege and also executive privilege. Those conversations, whatever's memorialized in these documents, conversations between President Trump and any of his aides. And so, well, while some people say this order that was issued yesterday is unprecedented, which it is. We have to remember the whole the, the whole uh, raid to begin with is unprecedented on, on a on a former president. So we are totally in un uncharted waters, and President Trump should be afforded that protection of a special master to make sure that uh, these materials are not released into the public domain and that he's got the right to expect the privacy that he enjoyed while he was in the White House. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty extraordinary and also interesting to note that with this move, Judge Cannon is also saying these documents cannot be used for any investigation uh, because they're using it as a uh, way to leak different things to continue to uh, put President Trump in a negative light. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about it. The judge yesterday in that order that, that she issued, and, and of course she highlighted or or hinted previously that this may, in fact, be her ruling, to have a, a special master, and first of all, somebody that uh, the Department of Justice and the Trump lawyers can agree on is the right thing. But but had that person who is specially trained to go through uh, documents, exhibits, whatever, whatever was seized during yeah. that raid, to make sure that what needs to be protected is, in fact, Protected. And one more thing, Maria, on this. So here we are past Labor Day. Uh, we're very close to the election. And as you know, there, there's always been a window <laughs> that the Department of Justice used, even when I was a, a U.S. attorney here in the Western District of Tennessee, a window not to affect any potential upcoming yeah. election. We're in that window right now. And so yeah, anything that the Department of Justice yeah. might want to do. Yeah, it, it needs to be deferred it, if they're going to do anything until after the November election. Yeah, but Congressman, you know the president continues to weaponize the agencies within this government while also attacking Republicans. He did another speech, a Labor Day speech yesterday, and took another shot at Republicans. Let's take a listen. The biggest contrast from what MAGA Republicans, the extreme right, the the the, the Trumpies. They want to go to Congress. These MAGA Republicans in Congress are coming for your Social Security as well. This from the guy who wants to change the way the structure of America works, pack the Supreme Court, weaponize uh, agencies within the government. Uh, they control yeah. all three elements of government, and yet it's the Republicans who are the dangerous to d democracy. We've got a new Wall Street Journal poll finds inflation is still at the top of most Americans' minds. 58 percent disapprove of Biden's handling of rising costs, Congressman. 75 percent of the country says that the country is headed in the wrong direction, and yet he continues to try to make make America great again a dirty word. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, back in, back in my district, the main thing that people want to talk about is gas and groceries, it, the, the rising cost of inflation, how expensive it is to live. And, and I think what should bother everybody is when, when Joe Biden put his hand on the Bible back in January of 2021 
He talked about bipartisanship and unity, and look, we're all, we, we all want that. But the way he's governed, I mean, the way he's governed, he truly has been the divider in chief. And, you know, you referenced the, the speech from last Thursday night. We're all going to remember that image, right? We're all going to remember uh, Biden standing up there in Philadelphia with those uh, demonic colors. And the thing that's good, that we all come away with is Joe Biden is an old and angry man. And to take it out, uh, to take his aggression out on half of the nation or more than half of the nation, he should be, he should be embarrassed. He should be ashamed. And it's, yeah. and it's unfortunate we've got a leader who is trying to divide the nation at this point in time. Well, Congressman, you say old and angry. Well, what about inept? I mean, the Penn Wharton budget model says that Biden's student loan bailout could cost up to a trillion dollars. JP Morgan has analysts out this morning that say that the plan would send more money to wealthier families instead of poorer ones. So, any, you know, uh, policy that we look at, it, it literally has been, has been wrong. Whether it's economic policy, foreign policy, what's your take on the student loan bailout? Out now, is it going to well, add to inflation? Thing. Yeah, there's no doubt that it would add to inflation. You cited that Penn Wharton budget model, which that one trillion dollars, uh, it should concern everybody, right, left, red, blue, independent, what have you. And when you talk to people around the nation, they do talk about this fairness issue, the, the fairness of of number one, uh, relieving this debt, to the fact that so many people uh, have had to pay back. Their student debt, but I also think about the legality of it, Maria. I mean, you've got Biden in his own words last year, where he doubted that he had the authority to relieve student debt by his words signing the the pen. You've got Pelosi's own words last year, where she talked about that the president doesn't have that executive authority. He's got the he may, in her words, have the power to postpone or delay student debt, but not to not to forgive it. And that's an act of Congress. And, and I agree with Nancy Pelosi on that. And so when, when this is brought into the court system, which it will be, I think that Biden's own words and Pelosi's own words will be used in those legal proceedings uh, against this whole effort. So it's, it's not done, but there's no doubt if it were to go through the effect that it has on the, on the budget and on the economy and on inflation. Yeah, well, look, I've got to say, uh, constitutional authority has not stopped this president before. He's blown off court orders regarding the border. Uh, and uh, we'll see if he continues to go around Congress with this, the Iran deal. We're going to talk about the Iran deal coming up with uh, General Jack Keane. But, Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Thank you, Maria.